What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name's Gym Leader Gio, and this is The Locker Room, week seven of the GBA. The San Francisco Giantes are team building against uh, Aaron, Cybertron, Zeng here, and the Melbourne Rotom. Uh, Rotums. There's multiple of them, even though the, uh, the little image would suggest that there aren't. I have a special guest with me here today. What is up, all you GBA Thai people? This is Tom, as you guys know. That's Tom. Hey. He is in town oh, from yeah. Jersey. Yes. And uh, saying a little hello. Whoa, whoa. Excuse I, know, I, me. Messed, the, I messed up the, the background. I messed a little up bit. the background a little bit here. Uh, so he's going to be supplying some guest commentary uh, as we go over my team this week. And so I'm going to be doing things kind of the same way as usual uh, and just splicing in a little commentary from Tom every now and then. So let's start things off. Uh, you can see the six Pokemon that I'll be bringing on the uh, area to the left over there. I'm going to be bringing Mega Scizor, Blacephalon, Shaman, Ditto, Toxapex, and Mew. We'll go into those sets in just a second. First, I want to talk about my opponent's team, which you can see right above my head here. Uh, and those are the 11 Pokemon that he has drafted. Get that out of there, Tom. Thomas. Tommy. Yeah. Uh, we are looking at Pelipper, Mega Swampert, Kingdra, Kartana, Mimikyu, Porygon Z, Ludicolo, Heliolisk, Raichu, Sligu, and Hitmontop. Now, as you guys know, if you're uh, familiar with the series, I kind of tier these based on likelihood that I think they're going to come. That's not always to say that the first six are the six that I guarantee he's going to bring. It's more like tiering by likelihood. So the top two Pokemon he's brought to almost every game uh, and I just think are incredibly likely brings for him. Very powerful set up his what I would perceive to be his strategy for the game, something like that. The second tier are Pokemon that I, I'm really pretty sure he's going to bring. The third tier of Pokemon I would not be at all surprised if he brings. And the last tier being Pokemon I would be pretty surprised if he brought. So let's start off with the bottom row uh, this time rather than starting with the top. Raichu um, doesn't hit very hard. Even Thunders in the Rain I'm not particularly worried about. It's a Raichu. It's, it's a Raichu. That's true. Yeah. It is a Raichu. Um, it's got some... It's got shenanigans it can do, so if you wanted a shenanigans mom, it has Fake Out, it has T-Wave, it's more of a doubles mom, in it, my personal opinion. It gets Surf and Fake Out and It gets things. Surf and Fake Out and things, and I, I'm not, I'm just not worried about it. It would struggle to break Shaman, um, it would struggle to break itself if Ditto was it, it would struggle to break anything with even a remote amount of special defense investment, and I'm... Uh, I'm just not thinking it's likely that he brings it. He's also never brought it thus far in the season, which you could argue one way or the other. You could argue that means there's no way he brings it, or, well, he's got to bring it at least once in this season, which is also not true, but uh, I just I don't see it being very likely that he brings. Sligu, an interesting addition to the rain team. little budget uh, Gudra there. Gudra uh, is amazing on rain teams. Sligu... Falls a little short. Defensively, it falls a little short. Offensively, it leaves a lot to be desired. It doesn't even have Dragon Tail, so it can't really phase. So there's a lot of things, right? So bad. It's it's unfortunate. I it's one of those mons that like, when it comes to tier five mons and throwing Eevee lights on things, there's a lot of untapped talent Pokemon you might not really think about. Things like Lickitung. Never would think about Lickitung, but it's actually bulkier than Licky Licky. Uh, and makes it relatively okay as a tier 5 uh, normal wall. So things like that I can see. Abilities that pair really well with a rain team, I just don't think it's right against me uh, because it's it's not going to stop my physical threats very well. It doesn't have the offensive firepower to stop any of my setup mons from just setting up on it. I think it's too passive and it can't really... It can't really apply the pressure that I think uh, he might want it to apply. So uh, I don't see it lightly that he brings it. Hitmontop, he, his team's not particularly weak to rocks. He hasn't brought it ever either. He hasn't brought it ever either. And Hitmontop is kind of garbage also. As you'll, he'll, as Geo will explain, um, Sligu also offers other mons on Geo's team to be food. Yeah. Do what they want. Do what they want. Absolutely, Aaron does not want that. And no, he does not. If he brings Sligu, it could be a problem for reasons we'll get into in just a second. Let's move up to the uh, the two rows above this. We'll talk about all six of these Mon kind of in tandem. Kingdra, uh, Kartana, Mimikyu um, being in the second row. Uh, because I'm 
I'm pretty sure they come. Uh, Kingdra being his special rain abuser. It's typing pairs well with Pelipper and Swampert. Water Dragon is just such good typing in general. So good. And <laughs> throw a Specs on that thing and it hits ridiculously hard. It's, it's hard to switch into, as is Mega Swampert. So in theory, they could kind of be on the same row, except sometimes in order to have Kingdra do what it needs to do, it can lose a little momentum in doing so, like if it's running crit dress sets or anything like that. So um, I don't think it's as likely to come as Mega Swampert, but I do think it's a very likely bring to abuse the rain. Kartana, amazing Pokemon, uh, great in OU, decent in draft format, amazing on this team. Uh, and I think he needs the, the coverage that it provides uh, and the switch into grass uh, that is likely to be brought in order to counter his Mega Swamper. So I think that comes too. Mimikyu I'm pretty sure is coming because I have a Mew and it's his best answer for Mew. So I'm, and it's a fun addition to his team. It's a good oh sh button for him. And I just think I see that as a likely bring. Now the next three are Pokemon who are all able to either take advantage of one or two of my mons or the rain or counters to the rain or the rain so looking at heliolisk for example he could run solar power if he's predicting that someone would run sunny day to counter his rain or he can just run dry skin to get advantage of the rain he can rock thunder to help pair up his decent but not great special attack uh, Good speed tier against me, uh, 109 base speed outspeeds Blacephalon, falls short of Archeops, but not a huge deal there. The reason I put it third in this list is one time where actually the position in the in the row does kind of matter, it's because it's trapped and annihilated by Dugtrio, and so I, I don't necessarily think that it's a, it's a, he might fear that. I don't have Dugtrio this week, so... <laughs> I, yeah, I just don't see it. It is another electric type that gets Surf, so it could threaten Dugtrio, of course, but I just, I think it doesn't match up great against enough of my team. And you know what it does. Yeah. I've used it before. Last season. Yeah, last season. I don't know that he knows that about me, but I, I have used it yeah, before. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Ludicolo and Porygon Z are both Pokemon. Either of them could really come with equal likelihood in my eyes. Porygon Z is a switch into Shadow Ball, which could be useful. He knows I have Blacephalon. Uh, if he's been paying attention to my games, he might notice that I have had a couple of uh, game-ending sweeps with it at the end of the in the in the late game. So he might want that just as a switch into Shadow Ball, just to be safe. Though I don't think he's going to think I bring Blacephalon this week because it's a Fire type, and he brings rain and it's ridiculously frail and in the rain all of his rain sweepers will outspeed it so I'm not sure that he thinks I bring it he might think that's a mistake on my part uh, and we'll get into why I did bring it in just a second uh, and then Ludicolo is good good typing decent coverage can be hard to switch into can be an annoying mon can have decent like setup it's a, a potential additional rain abuser so it depends how hard he wants to focus on rain this week versus how much he wants the immediate presence of physical power on something it. like yeah so prep for it and, and there you go so that's enough talking about his team let's go into what i'm bringing this week as i mentioned before we got dmx the toxapex defeaty the shaman head go boom the blacephalon proto the mega scissor remix the ditto and home yowner the mew so we're going to start off with uh, the DMX. No, you know, we got to start off with the Home Yowner set because you just saw me click on it and you're going to be like, what is he thinking? <laughs> Home Yowner is a weakness policy, iron defense, calm mind, soft boiled baton pass set. God, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Heat up? Right? So, uh, a couple of things about this. He only has one taunter on his entire team. That's Mimikyu. If Mimikyu's up against a Mew, I'm not so sure he's going to be clicking taunt. I'm pretty sure he's going to be clicking Shadow Claw. Iron Defense makes it that he can't three hit KO me if I pop one of those off uh, as he comes in against me. Presumably he won't know that I don't have an attack. He might be fearing that his disguise gets broken, something along those lines. If he does choose to pop off a Shadow Claw against me, Weakness Policy activates. I'm now plus two, plus two, plus two, and I can baton pass that out as I see fit. Now, 
He doesn't have, I don't have an attack. I know for a fact that's taunt bait. If he does run taunt and chooses to click taunt on Mimikyu, that's well played and well prepped on his part. I don't think that will be what happens when he comes face to face with this Mew set. I think he might opt to go for an attack of some sort. Whether it's Z or otherwise. Oh yeah, that is his Z-mon, isn't it? It's yeah, his, one of, yeah, his Z-mons are Cartana and Mimikyu. Yeah. Um, both good picks on his part, if I, if I do say so myself. Both of them, um, their choice of item is a part of creating the Mon and not a necessity in making the Mon the right way. You know, other Mons that are like, this Pokemon's amazing, it's just a little slow tends to be Okay, then throw a choice scarf on it. You know, like there's not an obvious item for Kartana. There's not an obvious item for Mimikyu. You can go a lot of ways with it. So, um, I don't really see that as being likely. What do you think about the matchup of Mew specifically versus the Mimikyu? Well, time? the thing is, it's like if you have Mew in and he switches into Mimikyu and you expect that, like you did in your mocks, basically you get the Iron Defense up and then he has to attack you. So essentially you're drawing him uh, into attacking you which could allow for another Iron Defense, could allow you to heal the scout moves, could allow you to Calm Mind, or even Baton Pass out right there. And that, of course, you're playing your game, not letting him play his. Mm -hmm. Nice, well said, I agree with that. So, uh, you might be thinking like, okay, with all this setup and not an attack, who are you passing to? And the answer is pretty simple, it's Tafiti. Tafiti matches up amazingly make against way, his team. Uh, he is, uh, <laughs> that's right, nice. There you go. But Tafiti's the name of the uh, Queen Island from Moana. In case you're, in case anyone is wondering why, you might remember that I nicknamed my Tapufini Moana last season. So I like that movie. Great movie. Great movie. Solid movie. Love Disney in general. Uh, so Shaman is running a physically defensive leftover set. I did this for a couple of reasons. One, he's a really Shaman's a really good check to Kartana. Really good check to Mega Swampert. Obviously, an Ice Punch will hurt, so I can't just hard switch in on the Swampert, take an Ice Punch, and be totally fine. Uh, there's got to be some play around that, and, and I'll, I'll get into sort of my thought process between how I'm going to do that in just a second, but let's go over the set a little bit more. Seed, Flare, Air Slash, Sunny Day, and Synthesis. So, Shaman, if I'm up against the Pelipper and pop off a Sunny Day, the accuracy of Hurricane becomes 50%. It could still hit me pretty hard. It can still confuse me. Sunny Day doesn't make it 0% accurate. It makes it 50. And it can still, 50% accurate moves can still hit. Synthesis. So, uh, but it makes Synthesis heal for 75% yeah. instead of 25%. So he has to U-turn. So he, he has to get or out something. of there. Mm-hmm. So that's sort of the thought process behind that one. Uh, it can bluff that I'm running Solar Beam. I'm not. I'm running Seed Flare. That's a good name. <laughs> uh, and then Air Slash is to round out coverage. Hits a lot of his team neutral. Hits Kartana neutral. Um, doesn't quite Oko it. But, you know, after a little chip here and there, um, it'll do the job. And I can take hits from Kartana relatively well uh, with my defensive investment. And Kartan is a likely switch into me, so if I can predict that and get an air slash off turn one, I kind of put him in uh, a really dangerous position and situation uh, where he's basically fodder at that point on. So, uh, the thing is here, if I'm able to get a Calm Mind or an Iron Defense or maybe a Weakness Policy boost over to Shaman, he can really threaten his team. He really doesn't have great switch ins to Seed Flare. Uh, his best one being Kartana, who can't take an air slash. If I get even plus one on Shaman, I can Oko. I'm pretty sure every single member of his team, of course, Mimikyu in disguise, uh, would need to be broken first. So, and with those defense investments and with my ability to throw up Sunny Day, he will also have problems. So, one thing that I'm looking at for Shaman here, um, because it is one of my Mega Swampert checks, on my entire team, I don't have anything that walls Swampert. It's gonna have to be a check based on me predicting what move he's going for. There is nothing on my team that fully checks it. If I can get Shaman in against the Mega Swampert that clicks Earthquake, then I can tank an Ice Punch, click Sunny Day, outspeed him the next turn, and click Synthesis to get 75% of my HP back. So I can play this around 
the Mega Swampert, remove its speed, and then sort of play around it. I mean, and also, if I do get a switch in against it on an Earthquake, he might really honestly think I'm just going to click Seed Flare and uh, switch into Kartana. But getting up a Sunny Day might also make the Kartana fear for its life. But it puts Tefiti in a safer situation because it's going to force the Pelipper to have to come back in at a certain point, taking more damage, keeping the offensive pressure up, forcing him to switch, and giving, making me, allowing me to play my game. So that's the idea there, uh, and that's the point behind the Tefiti Homey Honor Core. I really hope this one works. It's very out there. I know that. I know it's very out there. But if I try and set this up somewhere in the mid game where I've maybe removed some of his physical threats or maybe one of his special threats and I know the only thing I need to click is iron defense, that frees up a lot of prediction from my end. I don't need to think like, okay, would he switch in Kingdra here or would he switch in Swampert? I can sort of play it like, okay, all he's got left are physical threats, iron Not defense. Only that, and... But like if, if he switches out, whether he has Ludicolo, he has Swampert, or he switches out Swampert and he goes even into, into Pelipper and you have the Sunny Day up, that forces him then that he has to like keep switching out, keep uh, getting his reign up later on in the battle, which keeps you in control. And even if Ludicolo is out with the Air Slash, you threaten him out, and even if he's AV or whatever, he's still taking that damage that he really doesn't want to take. Mm -hmm. That's a good point too. Uh, moving on to some of the other Mon we've got on the team. Uh, we've also we've got Remix, obviously. There's not a lot to say about Remix. You guys know what Remix does. I am running the Choice Scarf again. I know I've done it millions of times before. You can call it predictable, but look at his team. If I am a Scarfed in the rain Mega Swampert, his team is fearful. It's like it, it needs to be very scared. And even when the rain dies, being a Scarf Mega Swampert is uh, still puts me pretty high up there in speed tiers. I mean, Mega Swampert hits 134 if it's Jolly and 119 if it's neutral. So plug in an extra, what is that? 60 speed on that thing. It's hitting the 180s. That's outspeeding Raichu, his fastest Pokemon. Yeah. So. Still great, uh, unless he has a Scarfer of his own. Obviously, it baits in Kartana a little bit because Kartana is a decent switch into Swampert, but Kartana's... Its defense isn't bad, but it's still frail. And so I'm, if I'm forcing him to switch, again, I'm picking up that uh, offensive momentum. So definitely a great switch into that. It's amazing as a Kingdra. Kingdra, knowing that it gets outsped by itself, predicting that there's a dragon move coming. It's going to force moves into things like Mimikyu. Uh, it really puts me in the driver's seat. And Kartana. If Kartana gets out of hand, maybe gets a Swords Dance up, picks up a kill against something, and now it's, you know, two and a half times as strong. And then I come in, Scarfed 2.5 times powerful Kartana. He has to watch out because he doesn't have great switch-ins to grass on his entire team. Yeah. And he's got to worry about that. That's a real issue for him. So definitely looking forward to seeing what Remix can do this week. Uh, let's move on. DMX uh, is also a relatively standard set, but with a few things, uh, some ideas that I was tossing around that Tom definitely helped me out on with this one. So uh, we're looking at a Black Sludge Toxapex with Regenerator, Scald, Baneful Bunker, Recover, and Toxic Spikes. Now, Toxic Spikes is pretty good against his team in general. It That's forced in the format. I think I agree with you, honestly, because being up for just a little bit, even if someone's going to click defog to get them out, all it takes is getting one Pokemon poisoned, and yeah. the one turn you did it is worth it. I mean, people... If they're grounded in their defog or spinner, it's, that's, that's really good residual damage. Mm -hmm. Really looking forward to it, because it, it also really helps me against things like the Mimikyu. It's got its disguise up. It'll be taking damage despite me failing to break the disguise. He's got a lot of setup sweepers, so it puts him on a timer. Um... It's gonna be, and it's chip damage that is extremely necessary for me and forces him to never feel comfortable leaving his Pokemon in. I just need to get some of these Pokemon weakened just a little bit and then I'm off to the races with some of my um, some of my special supers and some of my grass type Pokemon. So really looking forward to, uh, to the, getting some toxic spikes up this game. Recover standard. Baneful Bunker. Uh, this is the, uh, the idea that I couldn't settle on uh, that Tom eventually helped me with. Haze this week doesn't super make sense. No. Um, Mega Swampert can't really set up. The Kingdra can, um, but again, 
sort of puts me in a good position. The Mimikyu... Ditto prevents all of that. Yeah, Ditto is a great way to check all of the setup that he's got on his team. And Baneful Bunker can be amazing at wasting rain turns as well as getting a poison off on, first of all, anything, but very importantly, the Mega Swampert. If he's going to predict my switch into Defeaty, uh, coming if he comes in on the DMX not scared and... Uh, you know, rather than clicking Earthquake to try and take me out, predicts the Tafiti switch and clicks Ice Punch. Uh, I can get him with a Baneful Bunker, waste that turn of rain, get him poisoned even before I have Toxic Spikes up, and really push the button that way. Scald to try and fish some burns. Um, risks the burn on Kartana, risks the burn on Mimikyu, risks the burn on... I mean, obviously it risks the burn on anything, but really looking at getting a burn on those mons, that would be fantastic for me. Also, if you ever get the chance to find out what if he's carrying a Scarf Mon, that's the perfect move for it. Mm. It's a no drawback for the most part, unless you're coming in on like Swampert. Mm -hmm. But you know for a fact that you live the hits from the Kingdra. You can see what Kartana is going to go for, and if it is going for a not super effective move, you can play around it. Basically, having Baneful Bunker on this set specifically, like you said, scouting, rain turns, and overall getting that residual damage that is super helpful for the entire team. It's true. Absolutely. I'm running Special Defensive because I desperately need this as a Pokemon to switch in against Kingdra. Yeah. I need a, I need a Kingdra switch in, uh, and with the Special Defensive investment, Kingdra's Draco Meteor from a Specs Modest set fails to two-hit KO. Damn, damn right does. Especially after a Baneful Bunker to get an additional... Um, tick of black sludge recovery so definitely looking forward to that will definitely help me scout for likely choice mons uh, looking at his team the most likely ones being scarfed kartana specs kingdra and or specs porygon z um could also z looks better does it? I don't know that he would want to lock in. He does. You know what? I don't even know that if he brought Porygon Z, I don't know that I actually think he would choice it. It could be a choice mon. It's one of those mon that can des definitely benefit from it. But I don't know that he'd want to lock in on something like that. Because if he does, he offers free switch ins a lot of the time. I don't have a ground type, so if he has Thunder and Thunderbolt or even HP Electric, I mean. I mean, you're yeah. coming in. Possible. Yeah. That's yeah. it, though. Possible. Yeah. And the Heliolisk also could run specs to patch up its sort of weak. Alright, uh, last two Pokemon. We got Proto, Bullet Punch, U-Turn, Knock Off, Roost yeah. with uh, with a lot of defensive investment. All Good right. check to Mega Swampert. Uh, this thing is, I mean, this thing is Skarmory fat. Like, I don't know if people realize this. That's 70 HP, 140 defense. That's Skarmory fat right there. I know that he doesn't learn Fire Punch, so it would have to be HP Fire off a of Mega Swampert in the rain. Not not, not seeing that happening. Not a thing. Not a thing. Uh, he could run, try and run his like a power up punch set, but if he clicks power up punch against me and I get a slow U turn off, I'm going into Ditto and I'm a plus one, plus Bad one time. in the rain Mega Swampert. He's got to be scared of that. So um, I have Knock Off. Uh, great move for the Pelipper, which is a good switch into the oh, Mega yeah. Scizor. I can knock off its uh, Damp Rock. Five uh, turns, turns to four. Eight turns turns to five. Well, you, eight turns you get rid of the, the damp rock turns. To five. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, an additional. Yeah, so uh, and that was a that was a helpful call from Tom. At one point, I had a couple of different things there. Um, I was you contemplating. Had I had swords dance at one point. Another point, I was thinking about HP electric again, um, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. Just for the Pelipper. I don't think it's worth it. I think I can take hot. more advantage. Not this week. <laughs> it's too hot. It's too much. <laughs> Bullet Punch helps me a lot against the Mimikyu. If the Mimikyu starts to get out of hand a little bit, um, super effective against that. And uh, in general, just nice to have a, a little priority on the team. You never know when it can come in handy. Last Pokemon this week that I know people are going to be like, why are you bringing that against Rain? It's Head Go Boom, the Blacephalon, Focus Sash, yeah. Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, HP Grass Protect, running enough speed to outspeed uh, a max speed Mimikyu. He has one rocker. I never noticed that until right now. <laughs> um, it also outspeeds a an Adamant Kartana. And uh, yeah, basically, I'm, I'm, I know that Heliolisk is faster than me. I make sure that I outspeed the Heliolisk if it's um, a modest nature. Outspeeds the Kartana if it's adamant nature. Uh, don't outspeed the Raichu. Don't think the Raichu is coming. Probably wouldn't stay in against it if I, if 
if it is coming. Uh, Shadow Ball annihilates his team. Really does not nothing on his team. Appreciates it. Flamethrower, obviously, um, it's a stab move for me. It's a powerful stab move, but the rain's around. If I can get rid of the rain and start whittling some of his uh, rain sweepers, uh, it's not a bad click. HP Grass for the Mega Swampert. Um, and then Protect to waste rain turns and scout for... Um, uh, choice mons again so and the focus sash item just really i don't see rocks as a likely thing like swampert is his rocker and i just don't see him putting rocks on it when he really needs the coverage against my team i'm seeing that set as being waterfall earthquake ice punch and probably power up punch is my yeah, guess seems likely. yeah i i mean i don't know what else i mean i guess it could run if he sets up rocks, though, and you ever get the opportunity to ditto in on Pelipper, you defog, and that still preserves yeah. the Cephalon here. Good call. Yep. Yeah, because I'm not super worried about Pelipper against itself. Hurricane wouldn't be great, but um, still could be worth it if I'm looking at Head Go Boom as a late game option for me. Um, if I discover that Porygon Z is choice locked into Tri Attack, uh, getting in Blacephalon against it, free turn, get to click a, either a free Shadow Ball, since I'm not locked in on the turn if he wants to stay in continue to click try tech fine by me uh, i'm not locked in i can switch the shadow ball up anytime uh, i can predict his switch into something like the swamper for the hp grass i got options there so um Sash head go lock. boom it just it hits so hard yeah. and it can it's faster than a lot of his team once the rain is gone and that's really what i'm looking to capitalize on this week getting rid of the rain uh, playing, forcing him to make a lot of switches that are uh, taking him out of his element and putting me in mind. So that's the uh, the game I got this week. I have a soccer game in an hour and 10 minutes, so I got to get this battle going. Really looking forward to it. Um, Good luck, First Gio. battle, thank you. you. And uh, special thanks to my guest, Tom. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. See you guys next time. Later, guys.